Hi everyone, this is my March reading wrap up. Now, before we get started, I've realized I've done a pretty bad job of introducing myself in the beginning of these videos. So from this video onwards, or until it doesn't make sense anymore, I'll give a fun fact about myself that is relevant to the content of the video. So if you're new or returning here, hi, my name is Smitty. And when I was in middle school and high school, I was pretty obsessed with fairies, which plays into one of my reading choices this past month. Anyway, in March, I read a total of eight books, so let's get into it. The first book is Calypso's Guest by Andrew Sean Greer. This is a reimagining of one of Calypso's stories from Greek mythology, specifically the Odyssey. It's a queer sci-fi romance novella. Now, personally, I thought it was beautifully written. The thoughts and feelings of the main two protagonists are front and center, and the sci-fi backdrop is truly a backdrop. What was fun for me with this story was that if you've read Andrew Sean Greer's Pulitzer Prize winning novel Less, the main protagonist, Arthur Less, is an author who's written a reimagining of Calypso as well in his book. Now, the fictional work in the Less book is set in World War II, and this one in Calypso's Guest is clearly sci-fi. However, it was still a fun sort of connection to see. Overall, this was a 4.25 star read for me. Next up is The Lover by Silvia Morena Garcia. This is a 43 page short story which follows Judith, who's a young woman who just wants to be in love. One winter, a man shows up who she thinks is this lover that she's been waiting for and some unexpected things happen. I really appreciated how Silvia Morena Garcia plays around with genres in her writing. She's not afraid to try different genres out and mix different genres together and I think that came through in this short story as well. Personally, I appreciated that I could try some of her genres out that I normally don't read and I don't want to give anything more away, but I overall really enjoyed the story and it was a four star read for me. Next up is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This is a cozy historical fantasy set in Regency England. The main protagonist is named Dora and she's living with relatives and as a child, she was cursed by a fairy, which affects her behaviors and how she processes things. The story follows Dora as she enters London society alongside her cousin and encounters the strange, unfiltered and handsome Lord Sorcier. This is a charming novel with a bit of depth. I personally appreciated how the impact and gravity of war was played out and communicated through certain characters. However, I do wish there was a bit more diversity when it came to the characters. I couldn't help but compare it to another Regency era novel that I've recently read, which is The Benevolent Society of Ill-Mannered Ladies. And there in that novel, you see a bit more of racial and sexual diversity represented. Now, the most interesting aspect of this book to me was Dora's behaviors and mannerisms and how she went about thinking about them. You get to see inside her head as she's experienced things and how she's processing things, and that is truly fascinating to me. The parallels to various forms of neurodivergency can be seen, but I don't think it's exactly analogous and I would feel quite uncomfortable if that's what the author was trying to portray directly. In Dora's case, she has half her soul, and I don't think being neurodivergent makes you any less whole. So to me, it was a fascinating tension to think about and interrogate. Also, a very minor gripe is that I wish I didn't read the epilogue. I don't know if this was intending to be a series when this book was first written, but you kind of know where everything is going if you read the epilogue and it just made me lose a bit of motivation to read the rest of the books in the series because I just knew how it was going to end. Now that's just me though, but I overall really enjoyed reading this book and it was a four star read for me. Now in keeping with the London setting, next up we have Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Smale. This novel follows Cassandra Penelope Dangworth and she's had a bad day. She's been dumped, fired, and the one pastry that she really enjoys at her favorite cafe is not there, which I can totally relate to. She discovers that she can go back in time just a little bit and the novel follows her as she tinkers with her life and does some redo. I listened to this as an audiobook and I think the audiobook narrator Kirsten Atherton did an amazing job 
I really liked her narration and the Benevolent Society of Ill Mariner Ladies, and she did an excellent job with this book. Now, when it comes to the novel itself, the writing is engaging, but I felt like it lost its way halfway through the book. There are hints at a mystery in the beginning, but by the time the mystery is revealed, it feels a bit anticlimactic. So if we think of the novel pre and post reveal, those two parts really didn't match up for me. The tone and the actions of some of the characters just felt incongruous to me, and therefore it didn't make it believable. Still, it was a perfectly fine book with fun elements and a 3.25 star read for me. Next up is Trust by Hernan Diaz. This novel is centered around a rich couple in the 1920s, and we learn about how they make money, spend money, and there is a mystery surrounding them, and we're trying to find out the truth as readers. The book has four parts, and each part is told from a different perspective. The writing was excellent, and each part had a very distinct tone and style. However, it felt cohesive. Money was a major theme throughout this book, so if you're interested in 20th century markets, stocks, bonds, and those things, I think you'll find this book really fascinating. However, even if you aren't interested in those topics, I think you would still really enjoy the story in trying to figure out the truth about these characters. Now, I listened to this as an audiobook, and I actually listened to it with my husband. We listened to it while we were on a mini road trip getaway to the Shenandoah and we had a really fun time discussing the book and trying to figure out what was going on together. Now, this audiobook was an ensemble narration, and I thought the audiobook narrators did a fantastic job of bringing these characters to life. Overall, it was a 4.5 star read for me. Next up is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is the first book in the Wraith King series. This novel follows two main protagonists. The first is Ildiko, who is a human noblewoman, and the second is Brishan, who's a non-human second-in-line prince. They're arranged to marry each other to secure alliances for their respective kingdoms. Now, when I first read the blurb for this book, it honestly felt a bit broody, but it doesn't read like that at all. Now, you might think that Eldiko and Brishan would be resentful about their situation, but they're not embittered at all. They're quite level-headed and accepting of the situation and don't hold it against the other person at all. They're both kind and likable characters, which made it enjoyable to read. But the thing that kind of took it next level for me was the humor and the interactions between the two of them. Initially, they both find each other very unattractive because the standards of beauty in their respective worlds are quite different. There's also pretty funny differences when it comes to food and perceptions of what good food could be. Now, while I enjoy the characterization of the characters and their banter, I found myself noticing that the text slowed for me a bit outside of the dialogue, and I found myself skimming the text quite a bit as well. Now, I think I enjoy the characters a bit more than the plot in this one. However, I'm still looking forward to reading the rest of the books in this series. Overall, it was a four-star read for me. Next up is Two Scoops of Hellfire by Kimberly Lemming. This is a short and spicy story, and that pretty much sums up what this is. I honestly didn't read the blurb fully when I went to read this book. I just am really enjoying Kimberly Lemming's writing, but this one is truly pure spice. Basically, a human accidentally summons a demon while pandemic baking during lockdown and spice ensues. While there isn't much dialogue, when it does happen, Kimberly Lemming's signature hilarious dialogue style comes through. Overall, it was a 3.25 star read for me. Now, the last book I'll mention for this month is another Kimberly Lemming book, and that's The Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Human. And I actually reviewed that in last month's wrap up because I had read all of the series except for that book. So if you're curious to see my rating and review of that book, check out this video here. That's all for this month's wrap up. Thanks for joining in and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.